Hi everybody. My name is Amy and I'm one of the librarians who works in the Pennsylvania Department at Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh. So I've been saying Pennsylvania Department at Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh for a lot of these videos now and I thought it would be a good idea to take a minute and explain exactly what the Pennsylvania Department is and what we do. We are the local history and genealogy department for the library and we're located on the third floor of the main branch in the Oakland neighborhood of Pittsburgh. At the time I'm recording this video, we're not open for researchers to come in and use our collection, but give us a call, contact us through the library's chat service, or send an email, and we'll do our best to work with you remotely until the library is able to safely reopen for researchers. On the local history side of things, we have a rep large reference collection that includes histories of different neighborhoods in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh itself, and a lot of the communities that surround Pittsburgh. We also have church histories and biographies and the ever popular with genealogists, mug books. If you haven't heard the term mug books before, those are the large, this thick, if not thicker books that contain biographical information about the prominent men that founded a community or that were instrumental in the economic and social development of a community. We have these for all of the counties in Pennsylvania as well as some other areas. These are nice because if your ancestor was one of those prominent people, there's often a portrait of that person in the mug book that they're in. On the purely genealogy side of things, we have a number of resources that are available only in the Pennsylvania Department and that haven't been digitized yet. The most popular of those resources is our collection of birth and death registers that are on microfilm. Now, some of those have been digitized and are available on FamilySearch now, and you've heard me talk about how much I love FamilySearch if you're watching these videos in order, but some of them have not. So these birth and death registers are the record of your ancestors' birth or death prior to 1906 when the state started issuing birth and death certificates on a statewide level. And we are able to do remote research for people. We have an order form on our website and coming later in the week will be a tutorial of kind of the best way to navigate our website and get to that request form. But if you send us the name and the, as much information as you have about the person that you are researching, we're able to go through the indexes of our birth and death registers to see if your ancestor was noted there. We'll then scan that register entry and email you a copy of it to be part of your research. If you're working on a dual citizenship application, we can provide hard copies of that and then certify and, and notarize the records for you. The other thing that is a very heavily used resource in our department is our large collection of microfilmed newspapers. And we have a lot of the Pittsburgh area newspapers going back to 1786 when the first issue of the predecessor of today's Post-Gazette was published. And at any given time over Pittsburgh's history, there have been one to seven or eight papers published at any given time. So there are a lot of papers that we have and they're a good resource both for local history and for genealogy research. Another remote service that we're able to offer people is obituary research. So if you can't get to the library, we are able to look up obituaries for up to five at a time of your ancestors. Now in this case, we really do need to know a very tight time frame on when that person died just because a number of our newspapers are not indexed, meaning we don't have a list of what death notices or obituaries appeared in some of those papers. So the more you can tell us about when your ancestor died, the better chance we have of finding an obituary in one of the Pittsburgh papers. In addition to these physical resources, we have talked a little bit about some of the online resources that the library has available through its website. The biggest of those right now um, available remotely with a Carnegie Library library card is Ancestry.com. And if you don't have a library card yet, you can always register for one on the library's website and use that number to access our Ancestry subscription. To find that, you'll just go to the research page, click genealogy, and then you'll, down at the bottom of the page, you'll see a link to our Ancestry database. Just enter your library card and PIN number and you'll be able to use our subscription. 
The library also has a database called Fold3, which fo focuses primarily on military records. And we have several newspaper databases that I've talked about a little bit in other videos. Um, and those are available remotely as well. And they're a great resource for your research. That's Newspaper Archive and the Post-Gazette's Digital Archive. So those are just some of the things that we have in the Pennsylvania Department to help you along with your research. It's really difficult to describe an entire local history and genealogy collection in a very short video, but I tried to focus on the things that we have that you won't find anywhere else. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them or point you in the right direction. And if you'd like us to do some of that remote research that I mentioned, you will find all of those request forms on the genealogy page of the library's website. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye.